We're a little bit uh, behind in time, so I'm going to go sort of at maximum speed here, and I'm going to give you the final talk, which is about fire and fire prevention. Can I have the talk, please? I have to disclose that I'm a member of FUSE. Why are they occurring, what to do about it, and how to prevent them, in a nutshell. There's about um, 10 a year, or one in 200,000 operating rooms, when you look at Pennsylvania uh, five-year data on OR fire. So it's a number to remember, one in 200, 10 per year. If your uh, institution uh, does about 2,000, 3,000 cases, you'll, de you'll see definitely one per year in your OR on average. Typically, this is how it works. Minor facial surgery, alcohol-based prep, O2, tenting, full closed drape, and a spark was observed, and a flash beneath the tape, drapes, and that's the results. This picture shows that uh, nice young lady before the injury occurred. When you look at close claims, this is 15, 20 years, and it comes from the anesthesiology uh, literature. There's about 103 close claims on OR fires, vast majority head and neck. There's always oxygen involved, and 20% are permanent, disabled, or dead. We talk about uh, the fire triangle. You need those three things in order for a fire to occur, oxidizer, ignition source, and fuel. And the prevention requires team approach. The oxidizers are usually O2, can also be nitrous oxide. So in order to prevent them, minimize your O2. Consider LMA for small cases. Keep the O2 concentration below 30% and use cold instruments. Oxygen can burn anything. This is a piece of steel wool. Put that into the flames. It sparkles a little bit, doesn't burn, put it into oxygen, and within seconds that steel is gone. This is an experiment in fighter pilot gear that was done 100 years ago, almost. I'm exaggerating, 65 years ago in England. Let me go back. Can you go back, please? This is a suit of a fighter pilot in oxygen environment, and before the fighter pilot can say anything, do anything, he's in flames. You'll see another portion of this video in a second. This is basically the same thing as your operating room with closed drapes. You put oxygen in there, and before you can turn away, the entire patient is in flames. This is what oxygen does to you, and we work in an oxygen environment. So be beware of that. The fuel, plenty of it. Every time you prep the patient with what now is considered the standard, which is alcohol-based hibiclans, you have fuel. Igniters, plenty of them. Light sources, before and after, you should be very cognizant about it. Always use the holster when you use your instrument. Remember the residual heat. And be careful of floor pedals, especially in laparoscopic uh, surgery. You, don't, you look up, you look at the screen, you don't realize what you're doing with your feet. And then you uh, start a fire. What do you do? Stop the flow of, you know, extubate the patient, essentially. Stop the flow of oxygen. Immediately remove the burning material, extinguish the fire, and care for the patient. Easy to say, hard to remember. Quick video here from the Anesthesia Foundation. Can we have the sound on this one, please? Sound, before I start. Watch the quickness of how it happens. Fire! Fire! Get the oxygen off. Pull the drapes down. Get some sponges and saline. I'll get the extinguisher. I'm concerned about an airway burn. I think I'm going to intubate the patient. Okay. So we talk a lot about team training today. This is where the rubber hits the road. 
you need to be able to do this very well every time it happens to prevent what we saw in those pictures earlier. Discuss with your team fire risk, use wet sponges, have sterile water or saline on the back table, especially if you do head and neck cases or when the fire risk is high. You can Google this. This will tell you how high your fire risk is and then have plenty of water ready if you do oral procedure. And most importantly, and that's what we are trying to get across here, what Malcolm Munro told us, use cut. Cut has low voltage, low chance of arcing, low chance to ignite a fire. That's the other advantage of using that setting. Burns can be internally, fires can be internally. This is a very uh, uh, prominent case of a senator that basically died from what we saw with the bowel injuries. So I'm not gonna repeat much, but burn injuries, internal fires are much more common than external fires and as we know, can lead to death. I'm gonna uh, switch through all these slides. Can you advance me to the last slide, please? Guess not. So my last word on this is use team training. Use what we talked about at the very beginning of this session and you will avoid these catastrophes and fiascos. And with that, we're done. We're gonna have a few minutes for uh, some questions and uh, Dan Jones will field those question questions for you. Oops. All right, we still got a few minutes until the beer opens at the receptions. So any questions from anybody, for our experts? With that, we'll uh, close this session and go off to the exhibits with you. Bye-bye.